All righty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back into, uh, you know, the YouTube channel over here. Like, subscribe, rate, and review, do all that fun stuff. Whatever the popular YouTube people tell you to do, go do it. Uh, you know what you're supposed to do, I guess. I, I, I'm assuming there's some big subscribe button down there on the bottom. If you haven't hit that already, go ahead and do it. Uh, that's the last time I'll, you know, beg for your support, whatever. Here, we're going to get into the film session today. We're going to be breaking down uh, a, a full deep dive on Jamie Newman. I did about two and a half, three minutes on him the other day. Uh, but today, we're going to look at his strengths, weaknesses, uh, some areas of improvement that he could have this off season, And, uh, you know... Just what overall he does best and what he's going to possibly bring uh, to Athens and to the Georgia offense, assuming it does all become official. Uh, it has not yet become official, though he uh, you know, is in the UGA student portal and all that fun stuff. But he hasn't made an announcement, nor has uh, the football team, so we're going to respect that. And moving forward, we're just going to be talking about him hypothetically, okay? Uh, so here we go. We're going to take a look at the very first clip I've got for you. And as you can see, we're pretty early in the football game here. This is the first drive Wake Forest had the football. And what you can't tell from the picture is that it is a torrential downpour during this football game. I mean, it is pissing rain. Uh, and in this football game, Newman went 14 of 25 for 284 yards through the air, had 29 rushes for 144 yards. Again, just a couple of minutes into this football game and just a handful of plays into their first possession. And this is the third carry of Jamie Newman. And now, Georgia fans all year have been upset with what? Third and seven draw calls, right? Third and seven, we're going to hand off the halfback draw. Well, when a guy like Jamie Newman's on your football team, you can call third and seven quarterback draw because he could do things like this. He can stick the ball up in the hole, bounce out, make a guy miss, and stiff arm one guy and get a first down, okay? Now ESPN is going to give you the back shot here in a second, and you're going to just see the short area quickness that number 12 has. Here's the look right here. Take a look at it. So all he's doing, like I said, it's just quarterback draw. Anytime you see a quarterback pop open like this right here, and the ball's down, tailback's kind of fake in motion, or faking he's going to take the handoff, just know that this is quarterback draw or halfback draw, one or the other. They're running what we call lead draw at this point, right? You just use the tailback as another lead blocker and try to shove it up there in the hole. Now, Newman's going to make a great play here. You're going to see the jump cut. And look at that defensive end. This is a Division One defensive end, not exactly knowing, or outside linebacker, excuse me, a linebacker, not knowing exactly what to do here uh, because he still thinks the running back has the ball until Newman pops, or pops right back out of his face. And it's something we showed you on the two-minute or two-and-a-half-minute clip we did the other day. Right here, man, a lot of young quarterbacks who necessarily aren't, you know, smart enough to protect their body at all times. They're going to try to run this guy over, run around him, all that kind of stuff. Watch what Newman does once he realizes he's, A, gotten the first down, and, B, he's tackled right now. He's just going to go to the ground. He's going to protect and live to fight another day. We're going to watch it from the top. All this is is third and seven. There you get a kind of look at what kind of downpour we're in right here. And, again, he goes for, you know, over 400 total yards of offense by himself. Um, but, again, just short area quickness, being able to make a defender miss, and then the smarts to get down and uh, protect himself. We've talked about all season here on the Bulldog Maven how, you know, Georgia's offense a lot of times leaves one man unaccounted for. Uh, and he's supposed to be responsible for the running or the quarterback. But if the quarterback's not a running threat, uh, he's just an extra man to carry down the line of scrimmage and help out with the run attack. Uh, watch what this defensive end does and watch how much he respects Jamie Newman's running ability. And uh, though this isn't like a great play for Wake Forest, uh, it would have been a severely negative play had that guy not respected Jamie Newman's running ability. And watch where this ball ends up cutting. Okay. It ends up cutting back into B-gap where this guy otherwise would probably have occupied, okay? So just a little side note, a little quick measurement. Again, not a play that Jamie Newman's making right here, but that guy is obviously respecting his running capabilities. All right, we're just a few plays later here, and, you know, though this right tackle's about to get, you know, abused and beaten like a redheaded stepchild uh, by number 51 again here, uh, just something to take note here as quarterbacks. You got to have a time in your head, you know, a clock at least, especially on third and seven. You know, the defense is likely bringing pressure as they are right here. 
you got to have a clock in your head, okay? You can't just sit back there like a dull target, okay? Once you hit that three-step drop, you should probably be ready to make a move and, you know, at least feel that. That's coming to your, your front side right there. That's not like it's coming off the backside edge. That's coming to your face. Granted, you're checking the left side right here. I understand that. You're looking at your left side read. And again, this guy just got abused. But just something to pay attention to here, whether or not this guy's got 100% capability of pocket awareness. Um, this is a, a slight indication that he might not. But then again, look, he's got nowhere to step up right here. Okay, this guy, tailback did, you know, I guess the best he could of trying to cut this blitzing linebacker. And I'm not necessarily fond of, of doing this kind of pass protection right here. Okay, look, you know this this guard ought to be able to handle this right here. You're, as a center, your eyes have to be up for this blitzing A-gap or this blitzing backside A-gap. Unless this is what they do. They might call this like this. They might say, hey, back's got the mic. We're just going to let him do that. But this back's like 190 pounds. This linebacker's about 240 and coming with a screaming missile. So um, just something to pay attention to as we move forward. Third and seven, another critical down. We we talked a little bit earlier about whether or not Jamie Newman is going to be able to, you know, stand within the pocket or whether or not he wants to do that. This is a guy who's made his uh, aspirations known about wanting to be more of a pro-style quarterback and wanting to start going through his progressions and stuff like that and maybe getting away from the traditional RPO game. Hey, let me know if you spot a trend. Right tackle getting abused again. Watch Jamie Newman, you know, buy time right here. And then stand tall and deliver a strike to this guy who finally gets open on this drag route. You know, I'm I'm all a fan of running bunch sets like this. But let's get to him a little quicker, right? If we're going to do all of this to get the drag open, let's try to get the drag open a little faster on third and seven so we're not getting sacked. But nonetheless, Newman stands in there and delivers a strike and a very catchable football on a, on a very elongated slant, and this guy right here, I'm, I, he just, he looks a little lost right there. But nonetheless, you see, this is the kind of stuff you're trying to look for when you evaluate a quarterback. Now, he does have a little bit of happy feet. Watch him. See all that, all that bouncing around? Foundation isn't great once he gets his feet set. Look how he releases this ball. He basically releases the ball right here with his feet kind of cockeyed right here. Um, but it's okay, because guess what? He's 6'4". 230 pounds, and he's still going to drive that. I mean, look at that. He's not getting into that at all, and he's still going to throw a laser to this dude right here who has very little separation. And again, this guy, stop covering two or one with two. You're a free safety, man. Play free. Pick that ball off. Um, Grant Delpit probably does in the SEC. But either way, you see what we want to see right here. You get to see what you want to see right here from Newman. Uh, at least in terms of winning from and within the pocket. Now, he's going to make a lot of plays with his feet, but he also has the ability to do this, and that's a good sign uh, pending him attending Georgia. Here's an even better look at the same clip here on third and seven. Watch the subtle movement right here. Boom. This right here. Just sliding past that would be, and look at the accuracy. And again, look at the platform he throws this ball off of. Right into the chest. That's what we call a dart, right? Throwing darts. That's what we call it right here. This is good stuff, man. Good stuff from everybody but 73 over here. 73 getting abused. Now, you're not going to see Newman make this play by himself. Um, what you're going to just see is his commitment to winning right here. I know this is... A very, very small thing, but it's important when evaluating, especially a quarterback, right? It's supposed to be the leader of your football team and supposed to command a huddle. Uh, just watch what Newman does right here. He's going to carry out. Look how hard he carries out his fake right there, okay? Not only are we watching him carry out his fake, watch the first three step, bah, 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 okay? But watch this. Boom, I'm going to throw a block. I'm going to throw a block. My guy's going to finish off the run, but I'm going to get in there and throw a block and seal this edge because this right tackle can't quite do it himself. I'm telling you, man. That's And look how hype he is when his guy makes the play. Watch this. 
that's excitement. He's watching his teammate go out there and try to get stuff done with a little bit of help from himself. Again, two key things right here. Commitment to winning. This is excellence. Boom. Hard fake. Get in there. Stop watching the play. Don't buy a ticket. That's what my coach used to say all the time. You're buying a ticket. Quit buying a ticket. You want to go watch a game, sit in the stands. Get in there, man. Your play's not. You know, though he ran for 144 yards and was their lead rusher in this football game, he doesn't have to have the ball to impact the game. Watch the indecisiveness. This is called midline option, I believe. I think we're going to – yeah, this is nah, – no, this is just read option. Just outside zone read option right here. There's no RPOs off of here. These guys are straight blocking schemes up here, or they're running off. They're in man-to-man -man coverage. So this guy just says, hey, I'm going to run this guy off. This guy says, hey, I'm going to run this guy off. Now, what they are doing – is pulling guards for this outside zone look while he also keeps or or gives a hard play fake this way. But watch the indecisiveness for this guy from this guy right here and watch what it allows 25 to do as he captures this edge. Okay? Do you see the hesitation? Here, I'll stop it for you. Right now, this guy doesn't know who has the ball. All he knows is this dude's carried the rock Nine times already in the first quarter. Number 12 is their best player I've been hearing all week. Better stop 12. We got to stop 12. We got to stop 12. Well, here goes 25. Out on the edge for a big explosive play. Now, we get 10 yards here. But, again, look how close 86 is to making this play right here. Okay? If this guy didn't have a, a second, a half second of hesitation all the way back at the start of the snap, Okay, if this right here doesn't happen, where he crashes hard on number 12, 28 doesn't catch this corner, 25, whatever he is. He don't catch this corner, nor does he pick up this first down on first and 10. Okay, don't have to have the ball to make an impact. That's what a mobile quarterback does to your offense. I'm going to tell you right now, this ain't it, Chief. Take a look at this. This, this is not it, Chief. Take a look at this center. Watch what he's about to do. What what is this? Now he he found, he got lucky. He damn sure got lucky. But anytime you're doing this on pass, look where his eyes are. His eyes are staring right into his quarterback's chest, just merely seconds after snapping the football. Okay, you know Jamie Newman threw a, a handful of interceptions this year, um, turned the ball over a good bit. But I'm going to tend to say, you know, just about. 10, 11 minutes into this film session that this right here had a lot to do with it. What kind of pocket is this right here? Okay, watch what number 12 ends up doing on third and seven right here. Makes a couple of guys miss uh, and just making chicken salad out of chicken, you know what. Uh, and running the ball hard, man. It's like, I mean, quick acceleration right here. And he doesn't pick up the first down. But again, look at this. Look at this. I... I haven't seen it. And I'm pretty sure we got an away, away with a hold over here on the back. Say, oh, that's a damn sure a hold over there. Hey, good job by this defensive lineman. Watch him throw his hands up. I'm being held. Tell everybody I'm being held. Put it on the news. Either way, good stuff by 12. Bad stuff by this offensive line. I'm not even going to say anything. I'm just going to let this clip run and we'll move on to the next one. Here you go. Take a look. I mean, I just don't I, don't, I don't know what you, what you expect. Right tackle getting walked, left guard getting walked. It's just, it's not a winning proposition for any quarterback. One thing's for certain, not only is he the best thrower, obviously the best player on the field, he's the best running back on the field at most times. Watch this, watch the vision, nothing's there. Watch the jump cut, the bounce. And the finish, right? Watch him lower his shoulder and protect the football, okay? Right here, look, he got two hands on the ball. This guy's been taught to do something right here when he's running the football, okay? Gets contact and drives about five, six more yards. Again, best runner of the ball that Wake Forest had last season. That's why in this football game, it's pouring down raining. He carried the ball 29 times, okay? It's good stuff. And this is the great stuff, right? We showed you some of the bad stuff, showed you some of the questionable things. Well, 
here it is. And I know we've been showing you a lot of running tonight, but it's a pouring down rainstorm right here, right? Two games like, or Georgia played two of these games this season, right? Played uh, Missouri in a rain, or A&M in a rainstorm and Kentucky in a rainstorm. Well, how about this right here? We saw this earlier, right? This is just quarterback lead counter. Just giving the tailback a lead. I'm gonna break the I'm gonna break the arm tackle and then I'm gonna use the speed to run away from everybody. Touchdown. 36 yard score. Or what? 42 yard score right there. Okay. I don't know if this is in the Coley playbook, right? This is just like I said, counter or quarterback counter. Um, a lot of spread teams are running it nowadays. A lot of teams with uh, dual threat quarterbacks are running quarterback counter because you just get to add two extra blocker, an extra blocker into the equation. You know, typically it's 10 versus 11, right, during run plays because the quarterback's usually rolling out or carrying out some fake. Well, now we're involved in the running game. And all we got to do really is beat one guy because our tailback gets up onto the linebacker. And just watch, this is a ACC safety, right, coming down on this angle. He thinks he's got the guy beat. Well, no, he doesn't. He's taking an awful angle. Look how sharp the angle is. Watch him try to round this thing out, okay? Watch him from this point right here. He's going to round this thing out like this and realize he's beat at the last second because this guy's on-field speed is a little bit quicker than what this guy might have seen on tape. Do you see the round out? Call this a banana peel, right? Look at this. That's not it. That's not it, Chief. That's a touchdown for number 12. Flex. Was asked today on social media how he throws the intermediate routes, right? The 5 to 10 yard routes, the shorter routes. Uh, well, here's a drag on third and nine. And you're going to see what I like to call the easy juice, right? A quick little arm action. Watch his shoulders. He barely, he barely gets into this ball at all. And it's on the laces again. Or on the numbers, as you would call it. And just an easy, catchable ball. And look, a guy who has, you know, he's a big, strong, powerful guy, right? 6'4", 230 pounds, like we mentioned earlier. He can rip the football, okay? Well, this is just a guy who's played the position for quite a while, who knows what he's doing. Okay, he's making a, a nice, catchable ball for his receiver. Not putting it behind him. Putting it in front of him. Letting him clear it, too. Watch this linebacker. He's going to show pressure and then get back. You know, some guys will throw this football right now. He's going to let him clear, create space in the pocket as well. Watch. I guarantee you he moves up just a tad. Nope. He moves back because he's getting pressure again from this right tackle who is, I mean, just getting abused, man. But a little small something right there, but it's important. Here's one of his two interceptions against Clemson. You always got to turn on a tape like Clemson if you get an op opportunity to watch it. Uh, obviously because of what Brett Venables and this defense can do schematically. But just because you know you've got, you know, national championship contender quality defense on the field right here. This is a little play we called Fox in high school, right, trying to hide the Fox. This is where they're going to try to, you know, pretend like they're running wide receiver at the top and then slip a guy into this little cover two hole right here that they're going to try to find. The only problem is when you stare down a receiver, you give good football players the opportunity to run over there and pick you off okay look we give a good hard pump fake this guy's fake and block this is our intended target he is going to blow by this corner right here this safety that's walked down into the box to guard for the actually he's going to wait and try to hit the tight end i apologize you're going to try to hit the fake blocker right here okay but you can't stare him down because there's a guy sitting over there if you're going to hit that guy hit him now when he turns his head around get the ball on him now don't sit there and stare him down and then try to throw the football because Clemson's going to pick you off. Again, one of two interceptions in this football game and without a doubt one of his worst football games he had during his time at Wake Forest for the Demon Deacons. Here's a good look at it, man. This guy's just playing center field. He's got his eyes on this guy's eyes, and this guy's been locked on this area of the field since the start of the football play. Okay? just can't You can't do this kind of stuff. Not in the ACC, not in the SEC, not in any Division One caliber football team, really. Because you got good football players on the field. Even though that looks like a ton of space, a guy ain't got far to go, man. He's going to pick that ball off nine times out of ten. Unless he just drops the ball. Which guys at Clemson's don't, Clemson don't seem to do that. 
that's why, as an offensive coordinator, you really, really got to watch your tendencies and, and what you're doing year in and year out, game in and game out, right? We saw earlier, uh, maybe I showed you, maybe I didn't. I saw it earlier. Empty typically means quarterback draw for Wake Forest. Very often, or very often are they running quarterback draw out of here. Watch what this guy does. I mean, he, he knows he's adding on right now. Ain't no hesitation. Nothing. We're running. They're running quarterback draw. We're running quarterback draw into one, two, three, four, five. I mean, just bodies everywhere. Okay. Venables notices this stuff, man. They try. There's data everywhere. They know what you run, how often you run it. You know, when they sit down Monday afternoon or, mon you know, Monday evening in their their defensive meetings, they're telling these guys, look, if they go empty on, you know, second and long, second and medium, third and long, they run quarterback draw out of empty 29.5% of the time or whatever it is, 75.9% of the time, okay? That's how data works. That's how analytics works. That's how defense coordinators work. They got you all pinned down. If you don't get rid of your tendencies, which means every once in a while, you best throw this bubble. Okay, look, I, kn I know this play, this play is designed to be called a quarterback draw, but there's nothing stopping from Jamie Jamie Newman from throwing this football out here. We got numbers. Look, okay, this is all uh, presumably blocked up, or it could be. Okay, this guy's wide open out here. Nothing stopping you from not running that quarterback draw into bad numbers. Okay, just something to note. How about another transfer that's been talked about and linked? Well, a potential transfer. He hadn't officially entered the portal yet. But here's Chase Bryce right here, up 45-3. to three. Trevor Lawrence's day is over. Uh, so Bryce is going to get the whole fourth quarter. Now, here is an RPO, right? A run-pass option. And here's what makes it, okay? They're going to leave an end of the man on the line of scrimmage unblocked. He's going to be reading this linebacker right here. And this guy's got a slant at the top, working off of this open void that's going to be left by the linebacker filling the hole. Take a look. Okay. Actually, there's just nobody playing it. There's nobody playing this at all. Bryce does a good, makes a good decision. Throws a dart. Look at the arm. Look at the arm strength from seven. Right here. It's good stuff. Boom. Ball's right on the numbers. What else do we see here? I see no bubble defender. This guy is all keyed up in the run, even though they're up 45-3. to three. I'd be keyed up to the run, too. They best be running the football. Nah. Chase Bryce trying to pad them stats. Buddy been sitting on the bench all year, trying to get in here and rip the football. All right, so just to kind of conclude tonight's session, I think all in all, after, you know, three or four games of watching Newman, one thing I will tell you, is that personally, I do think he's a better runner than he is a thrower of the football. But that does not mean uh, he can't do this kind of stuff right here, okay? Last clip I'll show you tonight, he's giving a little RPO action. And watch how heavy he and long he rides it. Uh, this is something they coach up at Wake Forest. But look at the dart, the velocity on the football, the tight window he fits it into, and uh, and all that good, fun stuff, right? But again, I think... This right here, I'll show you. This right here is what he's best at. He's best at third and 11. Let's run quarterback counter and let's score on Notre Dame, the number eight team in the country. Okay. He's best at this kind of stuff right here. Going empty. Look, we showed you this earlier. Look, Brooks knows this stuff. Going empty. What do they do out of empty? They like to run quarterback draw. He likes to put his shoulder down and run the football. I think you're getting a runner at Georgia if he does indeed. Uh, commit and, and make his announcement or if he ever makes an announcement. Nonetheless, um, I also think it's really, really hard to evaluate this guy as a thrower because every time he seemingly throws the football, he's got somebody in his grill or somebody right near his grill. Okay, look at that ball comes out wobbly, but it looks like conditions are a little crap here in uh, Florida State as well. But again, every time this guy throws the football at Wake Forest, He's getting smacked in the mouth. So I think it's really, really hard to evaluate him as a thrower. Um, but you can see this stuff as a runner. The stuff as a runner is electric, and he's powerful. So all in all, all in all, if Georgia ends up landing Newman officially, um, 
you know, I think they got a really good football player, a guy that can stop gap, uh, you know, in between from and whatever they end up rolling out in 2021. And it's not a guarantee that this guy ends up starting at Georgia. Um, but you would imagine with him uh, seemingly picking Georgia over, you know, a litany of other schools that he's going to have his opportunity to start, uh, at least have the opportunity to uh, get a look at the starting role. And again, I think he got a better runner than you do a passer, but I think that just speaks of how well of a, or how good of a runner number 12 is. So we'll see what happens if, in, if indeed he does end up officially in Athens. Um, yes, he's in the student portal, all that good stuff. His name's there, but uh, nothing's come out of number 12's mouth and nothing's come out of the Georgia football staff. Um, but anyways, I told you I wouldn't beg for your support anymore, so I'm not going to. Um, but if you want to, hit that subscribe button uh, and share it to some of your friends. We appreciate you guys for watching. Uh, we'll see you next time.